We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Welcome to Leap Like a Girl, where we are empowering everyday women through our stories. I'm your host, Jessica Smith, and I began this journey by sharing my life story. Now, I join forces with my longtime friends, Jamie and Corlin, to keep this party going. We met many years ago as young sales girls in our 20s, driven and quickly rising to the top of our industry. As the years went on, life happened, and we all found ourselves in new companies and completely different industries, still striving for success in it all. Career, family, faith, fun. Now, it wasn't easy, but we never stopped moving. Get ready for our real conversations, inspiring stories, and our big life lessons as we share it all. The good, the bad, and the funny. Welcome to Lead Like a Girl. (laughs) <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back to Lead Like a Girl. I'm excited to be here with these ladies today, and we're going to get kicked off with something a little different. You guys know that we're just kind of starting this trio thing, so we're trying out new things. Tell us how you like it. But I want to start off with just what I'm going to call a quick wellness check, okay? These are my girls. I love them. I care about them. And we want to just start off with a quick wellness check on a scale from one to five. Five is you are fantastic. You are just great. And one is, listen, I'm, a, I'm not going to put on my hat, but I have a hat that says shit show supervisor. I'm not going to wear that today. But just tell me one to five, where are you on a scale from one to five? And um, just a little bit about, you know, how your week is going. Core. <laughs> Of course. Whoever wants to start off. As we look at each other. Okay. We're looking at each other. <laughs> First one we, to talk. I loses. didn't want to over talk. So then I just sat here and listened, you know. Yeah. Um, but I would say I'm I'm right about, a, I would say three, four, not a five for sure. I am heading out of a busy week and heading into a fun week. We're going on vacation next week. And so all the busyness that happens when you're prepping for vacation. And I don't know, I don't, I love my husband to death. I don't want to throw him under the bus, but there's a lot of things that I feel moms and wives do behind the scenes to get ready for vacation Mm -hmm. that my darling spouse has no idea. Amen. (laughs) Anybody can relate to that. So I'm going to spouse. So I, so I totally Jamie get it. Just does it all. I just do it all. But I'm doing. I'm doing good. I'm doing. I'm. I'm doing good. Jamie, how are you? Hi. So uh, really good. It was an interesting week. Um, attitude wise, I feel great. I got a lot of work done. Uh, physically, we'll say I had a bit of a challenge. So, as you guys know. Sunday, worked in the yard all day, made this awesome salad for dinner, grilled some steaks. And afterwards, I was like, let's take the dogs for a run. So I head out on my route. Um, Everything's going fine. I'm maybe a mile and a half away from my house. And I slipped off the sidewalk. At the same time, the dog ran right in front of me. Okay, keep in mind, I'm walking a Rhodesian Ridgeback, which is a dog that's like as big as I am. And can I you just say went, that three times fast, please. No, I can't even hardly say it once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I fell Damn straight dogs. on the concrete, like face on the con- <laughs> face on the concrete. I tore my meniscus, which is this cartilage in your knee. I was bleeding all over. I- it was terrible. Um, so by the end of the night, I couldn't walk. So the next morning I went in, the doctor found out what was going on. So yeah, this week has been interesting with that. I've just been hobbling around kind of, um, can't straighten it, can't bend it, you know, all of that. And normally, and you guys know me, I cannot sit still. It's really hard to sit still. So I would say uh, one to five, I'm going to say a four (laughs) because that last one is (laughs) like- Even with a broken knee, you're at a four, really? That's amazing. I'm impressed. She said a four out of five. Yeah, no. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm pretty happy though. I'm pretty it's happy. Good. My sister's in town from uh, from out of state, so um, yeah, it's I'm I'm good. and it's Mother's Day weekend. Come on, hopefully I'll get something. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully I'll get something. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because I I don't want to go too far into this Mother's Day thing, and and as far as wellness, I, I'm with you. I I really didn't have the best um week or two weeks. We know I did that great episode about. Uh, my grandmother and I came home for like two days and then I was off to a leadership meeting and um, you know, that, that was, that's a whole nother show, but um, ultimately I'm here, I'm alive, I'm happy. I have so much to be thankful for. So totally get it. I'm with you, Jamie. And Mother's Day for me is about me. So I encourage, I, I, I talk to so many people that are like, I have to spend Mother's Day with my mother-in-law and it's a tradition. I have to do this and I have to do that. And it's like, uh, no, Mother's Day is about me. I am a mother and, and it's so, so it's, it's a hard one to make everyone happy. But I started this a few years back where I just decided on Mother's Day, like a mother is a hard, hard job and I'm a damn good one, so I'm going to do what I want to do on Mother's Day. I don't care what these kids want to do, what this husband want to do, what this mother-in-law want to do. <laughs> it's going to be about me. So I encourage. Um, so here's the question, then, the Jess. What are you? What are you doing on Mother's Day? What is your Sunday? What yeah. are you doing? I that's that's the beauty of it. I have no freaking plans. I'm going to get my nails done. I'm ashamed to show these. I got to go get these nails done tomorrow. I want to go to church on Sunday morning and I just want to bring my butt home and wherever I end up is where I end up. I don't want anybody telling me I got to be at brunch. I got to be this place. I got to put clothes on. I got to put eyelash. I don't want I just want to not know what I'm doing and end up wherever I'm going to end up. So thanks for asking. Those Gordon. people that make you put on clothes. That's... Right. Like, no, I don't want to I mean... do any of that. <laughs> It's like clothes. That's all so overrated. Um, so, so thank you, ladies, for that wellness check. Um, and so now I want to get into a quick icebreaker. Okay, and I'm going to start with Jamie this time since Core went first last time. So my icebreaker question to you: um, I know we've been talking a little bit about our story of the DB world and um, how that's where we all came from. So today, I want to talk about how that chapter, how we got to that next chapter. And I know that looked a little different for all three of us. So today, I just want to talk about um, what that is. But first, I want to ask. So when you started at um, DB, at some point, you got really excited about what you were doing. And you said, all right, this is my plan for the rest of my life. So just curious to know, um, what was that plan? At some point, you thought about fast forward five years, 10 years. What was that plan when you were in the DB world? Where did you see yourself at this point in your journey? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to say, so I would say at my highest point, when I was felt like I was the most successful, I had the most support, I was having so much fun. At that point, if you said, where do you see yourself? I would have said, I want to be an owner of a franchise. Like that would be 100% where my head was at. It was like, I wanted, I, you know, I was a sales manager. I was, I, I, I felt like I could have done it, you know, and I had great, the franchise owners that I worked with were great. So that's exact. that, that'd be it. I would, I would have expected me to just purchase a franchise and, and spend the rest of my life doing it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love it. You say that, and I was just thinking, I would have said the same answer because, you know, the honest truth, Jessica, you were probably not in these conversations, but Jamie and I, we talked about that. What if we owned a franchise? Because we would go to these conferences, go to these summits, and all these owners who just looked like us and acted like us and walked the walk and talked the talk. Of their of their employees, which were us, we were a lot of times doing a lot of the heavy lifting day to day and doing the things and doing nothing, you know. And I don't want to take anything away from our franchisee owners, but we had talked about that. What if we owned a a, a club together? Mm -hmm. And so, me then looking at me, you know, five ten years down the road, it's longer than that, but that was a part of my future too. I would say, absolutely. So for me, that initially was not, and I'm glad that you pointed this out and you probably didn't mean it literally, but when I went to the conferences, I did not see people who look like me. 
the owners of these businesses mm-hmm. did not look like me. And so it wasn't my first thought to say, oh, I want to own a, a, a DB, right? My first thought was I want to be a sales manager or, you know, I want to run this place. Never I want to own this place. And it wasn't until the owners actually planted that seed for me and they were able to let me know, hey, you could own this place. And this was in what, 2005, 2006, when we had the conversation, hey, we have a 10-year plan. We want to move to California. We're going to open these two locations. We're going to retire. And these guys were already millionaires, right? So we're going to retire. And, you know, you you, um, and the other sales leader at that time will own these two locations. And I'm like, okay, I didn't ask any questions. I didn't even ask how much am I going to get paid? There was no offer letter, none of that. I was like, okay, let's go. (laughs) Didn't matter, you know, and there was this joke around the office moving to San Francisco. Oh, Mark and Paul can tell you to go jump off the Golden Gate Bridge and you would. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, I would. One, because I know that they would make (laughs) sure something was there to catch me before I fall. And two, I know there's going to be a lot of money involved. So, yes, I will jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. So, yeah, that was certainly my plan. Um, Right now, I thought I would be a millionaire by this time. I would be very successfully running two locations in California. Um, I would be on top of the world and you know, growing and developing other people to do the same thing. That's where I just knew that I would be at this point in my life. So um, obviously God had a different plan for us all. And that's the next thing I want to get into and and, and just hear a little more about, um, I would say, I'm going to start with Jamie because I think Jamie was first out of the three of us that left the company. So tell me a little bit about um, that journey and how you came to that decision and where you went after that? And was it just one stop, five or 10? Sure. So um, I, I worked there for 10 years. I'll have, and I don't remember, Cor, you were there for 10 years. Jessica, 20? I was there probably for closer to 13, actually. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I was an 18. Okay. Okay. So I was there for 10. I started when I was like early 20s. And as you guys know, the schedule was sort of like a second shift kind of type schedule. So you went in yep. like noon, one-ish or whatever um, and, and worked until like 9.30 or 10 at night during the week and then all day on Saturday. So yeah, in the automotive, you can imagine early 20s. Yeah. In the automotive industry now, we call that retail hours. Very similar to working at a car dealership, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, with that type of schedule, when you're in your early 20s, mid 20s, it's great. I mean, you're, you can go out at night, you know, you can sleep in, you've got Sunday, you've got that one day off that Sunday off that one day. <laughs> I know. I just remember when not to jump ahead, but when I uh, went to my next position and had both Saturday and Sunday off, I would get everything I needed to get done by like middle of the day Saturday. And then I'd be sitting around on Sunday, like, so what does everybody else do on the weekends? You know, right. like I never <laughs> had two days in a row ever. <laughs> It's like, Same. how yeah. did I, why did I think that was so great? You know, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah. I know, but, uh, anyway, I had, um, yeah. So when I was that age, you know, before I had a family and stuff, I, I loved it. I could, it was great. I could do whatever I wanted. I could sleep in. Um, so things changed a bit, right. When I, um, I, I definitely enjoyed a lot of success. Uh, but I, you know, I started to have a family. So I was married. I, I had a couple of daughters and, continued on with that same schedule. Um, and, and that was fine when kids are little, it's fine. Um, sort of a bit of personal info, but I went through a divorce when my girl, my daughters were only one and two, um, two and three. So it took about a year and, um, found myself in a position where, uh, it was literally just me with them. So, I mean, I'd had no family in the state, um, and I was kind of desperate a little bit there for, okay, how am I going to navigate this next this next part of my life? So ended up, Coraline actually introduced me to one of her friends, and she became my kid's nanny. So if you have children, right, you know, I mean, if you work those retail hours, 
you're not gonna fu- there's no daycare <laughs> there's no one <laughs> you have to you you know you have to figure that out so I had a nanny and um things went pretty well I ended up you know fast forward a little bit in life and Veronica and Delyn were five and five and six uh, when I had my third daughter Sophia so once she came along I actually made the decision to work part-time at the company. So I only came in for about four hours a night and then Saturdays, and that worked out pretty well for me. But we got to the point where my older two daughters were going to be going to school all day. So from like, so starting kindergarten and first grade. And when you think about those hours and you think about when your kids go to school, I was like, I'm never going to see my children. They're going to go to school in the morning and I'm going to get home after they go to bed. You know, and uh, not to say anything negative, but a comment was made to me one time and uh, when I was doing that part time and they said, why are you always in such a rush to get out of here? Like you're always like trying to get out of here. And I just looked at this person and I'm like, if I can get home before 830, I can tuck my kid, tuck my kids in bed. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. like, that's why. Like, of yeah. course I want to get out here. So anyway, that that was part of it. Um, Ended up. um ending a relationship and then uh, deciding, you know what, I think I'm just going to move back home. So I'm from Iowa originally. And I was like, I'm just going to move back home. I'm going to have support. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I've got these three daughters now. Um, And so ultimately, you know, that was my decision. It really wasn't anything to do with the job itself. You know, I felt very satisfied. I financially, it was amazing. Um, but yeah, it was it was like that very simply like that's the schedule I had to do. I had to make a change for my family. Yeah. So um ended up moving moving back home to Iowa with the three girls and working a a job Monday through Friday from 7:30 to 4:30. What? <laughs> like <laughs> what? I I love that normal that felt super I know. Weird. I was like yeah. <laughs> It was super weird. Um but you know I got used to it and everything like that so it were it went worked worked out fine but um yeah it was it was one of those decisions that's more of a life decision in terms of your family than it was a life decision in terms of you know finance finances so Absolutely. so that was my story I and I and I think it's um important to know you know I left the company uh f- several years before either one of you and um it so i i had that really po- it was my choice you know what i mean i had a positive position there and positive thoughts about it but ultimately it was more like i got to go you know and i remember yeah. um the owners threw a party for me like a going away party and i was b- in tears practically because i was just like i've learned so much from you i appreciate you so much you know it was so it was a really very positive experience for me we took it all we brought them to our land an endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga, Hellblade Two. Play it now with Game Pass. Yeah. But I bet it was, Yeah, I mean, it was still hard because correct me if I'm wrong. I know you guys feel the same way that I feel like this wasn't just like your employer. Like these people were mm-hmm. family like that. Like this was who you, you spent more time with these people than you did your whole family. Right. These are, oh. like you said, these are many yeah, days, absolutely. long hours. So, so I, I mean, that had to be hard. Jamie, when she decided that she was going to leave, we she had asked me to go out with her on a night, and I thought we were going out and having a girls' night. We're gonna we got dinner downtown Minneapolis, yeah. and at a really nice restaurant. We're all dressed up, looking cute as we as we sometimes do. <laughs> and <You're> the cutest. <laughs> <laughs> and she so to say, I'm ready to just do. Have, Go ahead. Um, so, so I'm ready to to go out and have some fun with my friend. And she's like, well, I've got something to share with you. Uh-huh. And just as the waiter is coming over to take our order. I forgot this. I forgot yeah. this. Okay. Jamie just had told me, she's like, well, I'm, I'm leaving the company. I'm moving back to Iowa. And I just instantly started crying. I just didn't. I was so 
unbelievably sad. My best friend for 10 years is moving away. And I just did not know how to do, do what would do what to do with those feelings. And the server comes over and he's like, how are we doing tonight? And I just looked at him and I'm like, my friend is leaving me. <laughs> and he's like, should I come back? Like so flustered, like doesn't know how to deal with girls crying, like just left. But, yeah. Oh my goodness. It was it the was worst. Horrible. It, it was, was terrible it was timing. Bad. It was so You're bad. like, uh. <laughs> I forgot that. Oh I forgot. About, I mean, I remember we went to dinner, but I forgot about that. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. But yeah. no, Jessica, to your point, like, I mean, it's like, like that's it. Like you're, mm-hmm. you really did feel like you were leaving all of your, your best friends, your family, your life. Uh, yeah. So that, mm-hmm. that definitely was difficult, you know? And even though you, you know, were leaving on your own terms, you were not just leaving the company, you know, for like, oh, I found, you know, a better opportunity, you're moving away. So that's another Mm -hmm. part, right? That's a, that's an additional level. Um, So Cor, what about you? What was your um, end of that life look like? the end of the company. You know, I was thinking about this and, you know, one of the big things that happened, we've shared that this, the, the industry that we were in was building and remodeling. And one of the big things that happened during our stay or our tenure at this company was the big housing crisis of 2008, 2009. And so we were riding this wave of success where we just, it just was very easy to sell things when things were building and growing and the housing crisis hit and it didn't really fluctuate down to us that fast as some of the other industries where it was just cold turkey but when it it was just slow and steady a downward spiral into sales were getting harder and during that time kind of similar to Jamie I had gotten married during that time and I had moved and so our office was in Minneapolis and I went to go see about a boy in Mankato, which people who don't know Minnesota geography, (laughs) that's about an hour away. And I kind of justified it. I knew people that commuted in the metro and were in the car for an hour. So I didn't really think it was that big of a deal. But, you know, fast forward, the our company was sold. And so our, our office was owned and operated by a new family. And I just was thinking, man, it, I wonder, I wonder what life is, out, is outside of this. I'd been working for my entire twenties, my entire career life was in here, and so it was hard thinking about doing something different. It was a hard thought, and um, and I think really the 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 last point or the last motivation was that heading into six months before I left, I had a baby. And I just remember you get three, I had three months of maternity leave thinking coming into that when you have no idea as a new mom, three months seems like a long time. And I was coming up in the end of that three months and thinking of that I'm going to start commuting back and forth to work and whatnot. And I just thought, wow, this, <laughs> this baby is so little. Like I just can't imagine being away from this little person that I hadn't even met yet at that time. Right. It's it just... I don't know. I just, it was really, it was a hard thing. And then really. And that was my motivation for working those hours. No, I'm just joking. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> It was just hard. And then Dude, really, and then the not. other thing that, <laughs> right. <laughs> the other really big thing in which I'll maybe get into a future story, but my, my husband who was extremely healthy and uh, he had a, he had a heart attack out of the blue. We were very young. He was in his thirties and it was just a very aberrant thing. He's healthy now and with us and amazing, but it was, it was a big thing. And so really all of a sudden I just decided I need to find a new career in the town that I live. I'm going to stop commuting and look for a job. Like Jamie said, (laughs) then there was normal hours, which was just crazy. But I do think, and I don't know if you guys could speak to this at all, but I think that coming into a space where you have done the same career and the same job for a decade, you get into a groove, you've got this certain set of skills, which I think is great, like we talked about in prior episodes, but it's so specific that coming out of that and thinking, what do I, what at one, what do I want to do and what can I do? You know, yeah. looking like thinking of what those, like how those things are transferable. It was, it was, it was hard. Yeah. So did you work for the new owners? I can't remember. Or were you considering and then- I just... did for a short period of time for maybe maybe a year, maybe a year or so. Oh, okay. So I forgot about that. And what what, what was that like? 
did it just feel weird you know, because it, was, it wasn't family? They were, they were or... different. <laughs> you know, and again, great people to not take anything away from them. But, you know, when you're, I mean, literally born and raised in your career with a family. And, you know, I think that you, you've talked about the owners of your company, Jess, in a way that I feel like like they're your dads. And I feel like the owners of our company, I wouldn't, I just would never call them my parents necessarily. I feel maybe we were just close in age or it was just a different relationship. And they're definitely my friends, but I feel like they, there's another box that they check in my life. And I would say to put a word around it, it would be mentors or something like that. So I just think that they helped shape who I was in my work ethic and wanting to aspire for big things and not take no for an answer and set goals. And I just think that their, uh, their impact on my life is just so amazing to anybody that would have taken their place in a future company would have come up subpar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Agree, well, listen, Jamie? Right. I, I, yep. I am not afraid to say this, that, so when, um, and, and I know we're, we only have a little bit of time. So I thank you ladies for sharing that and taking so much time because I don't really like talking about this as much because I get emotional. But um, when my next chapter started, it started with they sold the Chicago location to a fat schmuck. Okay. So that's the, that's the only words that I can (laughs) think of to describe this dude. Um, And so with that, um, it was a very easy decision and I was in the middle of a divorce. I was in the middle of just so many emotions and I had a taste of working for this guy and he brought his two daughters, his son-in-law. So it was quite obvious that it was going to be a family business and I was very far apart from being a part of their family. And so the offer to move to California and be part of this uh, transition for the guys that own uh, DB was at first it was, wow, my whole family is here in Chicago. That's moving across country. I'm getting ready to be a single mom again. Now I have two boys. Like, do I really want to do this? And everybody's like, you can't do that. That's California is the most expensive place and you have a home already. That's just crazy. And you don't even know if this business is going to work in California. You don't even know how much money you're going to make. There were so many unknowns. It was probably one of the scariest times in my life. But having that experience of working um, for, I'll just call him the schmuck, um, that really helped me realize um, what, how special it was that we had, it was a family. It was a family. He, he looked at me Mm -hmm. like I was family. I looked at him and there was once upon a time, if you guys remember this, where my sister and two brothers all worked there at the same time. So it was literally (laughs) a family business from my standpoint, right? Not including the nieces, the nephews, the aunts, and all the other people that I had hired and fired over the years. So when the opportunity came, I was gone. And listen, it was the ride of my life. We did a lot. Um, We built our dream home. I met my husband now there. I mean, life could not have gotten any better. And the company got to a point where it was a private company. And now this is by, by the time I'm ending my DB life. And they decided to sell, and here we were, we were done. So, and this was being millions of dollars into our San Francisco location, which was our second location. So when I say I was this close to owning the place, now, why am I thankful? Were... Because this close, right? We were, and, and but why am I thankful? Well, one, those millions were my millions. So that, that, that part, right? But when when things came crashing down, it wasn't just the hardship. We've lost everything. We have no money. We had to sell our homes. We're like, we're in a major, major financial hardship, right? Um, it was what Coralyn just said. What am I going to do? Like, I barely have a high school diploma. I have no college. This is my family. I've spent 
18 years sacrificing my children, my family, my marriage, everything to build this thing so that I can have the life and I can have that um, flexibility to do what I want, what am I going to do? I I didn't have a plan B. And so it was hard, really hard. I told you guys I didn't like doing this because I get emotional, <laughs> but it was really... I'm sitting here. I'm getting emotional with you too. Because I remember we we actually talked, Jessica. I don't know if you remember this, but when our when our when my Minneapolis franchise owners told me that they were selling, I called you and I was bawling. I was so sad because it was yeah. it was a completely an end an end of yeah. an era for sure. So that was kind of how it how it happened, and it's like okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do, um, but and you guys know. Listeners know what I'm going to say. I did the only thing I know how to do. I'm praying. I'm praying. Lord, you need something. You need you need to do something because I have no idea. And um, for the record, me and Mr. Smith both work for the company and both in the same boat. No traditional education. And, you know, we had made some smart investments with our money. But when you live in the Bay Area, that shit went fast, really fast. And so, um, you know, and, and we'll get into it next time in terms of like what we did next. Um, but here's the thing. I think that, um, these stories are really important because, um, we all had different reasons, right? We all had, um, life took us in different places for different reasons, but that season ended and it wasn't part of our plan. Right. We all had plans that Mm. we knew we were going to own this place. And and that didn't happen. But we had to pivot and we had to keep it moving. And that is the resiliency that we have, that that's that women have, that moms have. And so um, I'm just excited to continue the conversation and talk more about these moments. And I wish you ladies a very happy Mother's Day. I love you. And till next time, lead like a girl's out. Happy Mother.